What's going on, everybody? C4 here, and welcome to week number five of the college football season. And it is going to be a big one. Of course, we have Florida against Kentucky. And one thing we know about that is the Gators always win. But that is not the game of the week. There's a couple. This is probably one of the first big game weeks where there's plenty of, you know, noteworthy matchups. I usually start from the bottom working way up. Cal Oregon's not going to be bad. It's probably going to be a shootout. We got 3-0 Arizona going up against number four ranked 3-0 Washington. That's going to be a good game. Stanford, Washington State. Washington State has been laying our hurt on some big time uh, teams here. So that could be an upset alert. Ole Miss at Bama is always an intriguing game. Even though Chad Kelly's no longer there at Ole Miss. You got Wisconsin, Ohio State. Number one ranked Ohio State. LSU, Georgia. 4-0 LSU, who we featured in the last episode with Darius Geis and company, going up against the 2-1 Georgia Bulldogs. We got Miami USF, which is very interesting, because Miami, who we already played earlier on, number 15, ranked 2-1, but USF 3-0, 16th ranked with maybe, you know, a guy that's certainly an outside contender for the Heisman Trophy, and that is dual-threat quarterback Quinton Flowers. That is definitely a game we're going to take a quick, quick eye on. 2-1, uh, number 8 ranked USC going up against 3-0, and 22 ranked Arizona State. That's another real intriguing game, but the game we will be featuring here today is going to be Oklahoma State against West Virginia. Key game here, big time matchup, two undefeated teams, but big injuries on both sides of the ball. Looking at West Virginia, no Will Greer, he's out for the year. A guy that was trying to get himself into first round potential uh, position for the upcoming draft Heisman Trophy out for the year and then look at Oklahoma State they're debatably their best player James Washington the wide receivers out for eight weeks so it's going to be a close matchup I think we're going to be taking old Barry Sanders alumni Oklahoma State in this one but plenty of good games let's jump into this one and then we'll come back with the results and the players of the all right, here in the quick sneak preview, what we can say is fairly consistent on offense and defense for Oklahoma State. Looking at West Virginia, obviously those offensive numbers are going to be down without no Will Greer. But look at that defense. Ninth, sixth, seventh, ninth. Big test here for Oklahoma State and Mason Rudolph. Looking at the home team, they have Crawford, Askew Henry, and Bosch. Their top players obviously missing uh, Will Greer. I think it's going to be an uphill battle here for West Virginia. Looking at... Ooh, he's injured. They, they have Washington still there. We have the punter. But Mason Rudolph is the man that is going to lead them to victory, potentially. One of the top quarterbacks in the nation. Uh, we all know about the notable injuries. that Will Greer's gone. Washington's gone. It's going to be still a game of what team can persevere. Let's jump in. And well, that, that just happened. Oh, wide open. McCluskey gets in for the touchdown. Exactly what we need on the offensive side of the ball, considering we threw two back-to-back -back interceptions with Mason Rudolph. And this team, if Oklahoma State wants to win, is going to go through the arm of Mason Rudolph. Wide open, blown coverage on the play by a very good West Virginia defense. We get a competitive ball game, two-point lead for West Virginia, a minute 33 left in the second. All right, here we are, third and inches. Best believe it's time to whip out the C4 special to go ahead. With one of the fastest running backs in the nation. Just, oh my god, look at that pancake block on the outside by the tight end. One yard touchdown, Justice Hill. 17-15 Oklahoma State. They need this man, Mason Rudolph. Not playing good. Everyone else needs to step it up. Easy. Get that work, boy. Fuck, we play like shit, man. And that was not a great game. Five interceptions on the day for Mason Rudolph. My bad. Anyone out here that's an Oklahoma State fan, the quarterback for West Virginia there. In relief of Will Greer, got player of the game. We only lost by six, and we had five interceptions to think we only picked them off once. But that's it, man. Number, that is a legit defense. Uh, coming in this game, no idea that West Virginia had a good defense. They fucking, they played me higher than any team I've played this year. And they get the hard-earned victory, man. Got to give it up to them. 32, West Virginia, 26, Oklahoma State. Disappointing, though. All right, looking back at some of the top scores, of course, Florida beat Kentucky, 28-24, to moving to 3-1 on the season. But again, this was a massive game with, or massive week, sorry, of games. Tennessee beating out North Carolina in a close one in overtime, 16-13 to to move to 3-1. Uh, well, we got A&M going over Arkansas 
Moving down, we got Oklahoma beating Notre Dame 17 to 10. Hmm. West Virginia. Oh, okay, we're not going to talk about that game. Carrying on from that. Um, what else do we have here? Florida State just edging by Boston College in a competitive game. We have TCU beating SMU. USC edging past Arizona State 31 to 21. Let's take a quick look and see how Sam Darnold did in this game. Sam Darnold looks like he left with an injury. Oh, got to stay up to date on that. Only three passing attempts and an interception. But still, USC able to get past Arizona State 31 to 21. Miami body bag, USF 38 to 7. Let's see how our boy Quentin Flowers did. Again, what the didn't just did not play. Look at that. 39 passing yards. Why aren't these starters performing? What the hell is going on? Um, Georgia beat LSU 19 to 14. And what could be considered an upset. Uh, we won't really go in too much into that. Ohio State beat Wisconsin 24 to 14. Alabama body bagged Ole Miss 35 to 3. Stanford was able to stay away from a team who's been upsetting everyone left, right, center, Washington State 31 to 19. And lastly, the battle of the undefeated is Washington stays undefeated by beating Arizona 38 to 10. So some big notable matchups all across college football. Let's take a quick look here at the players of the week. And we'll wrap it up. So on the NCAA, defense went to North Carolina State defensive back Mike Stevens, who had two interceptions. And look at that offense. Once again, it's Eric Dungy, the quarterback of Syracuse, with five total touchdowns. Dungy, this is kind of the reason why I wanted to do this series. Kind, You wouldn't have expected him. Probably like sixth, seventh rounder. The way that he is performing might be one of those guys that could slip up in the first, second, or third round in the upcoming draft if he decides to declare. Uh, ACC stays as is. Uh, there we go, the Big Ten. Once again, Antoine Winfield Jr. coming in as Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. JT Barrett on Ohio State had three total touchdowns on the day in a win over Wisconsin. Looking at the Big 12, Baker Mayfield back in action for Oklahoma. Had some injuries earlier on in a win against Notre Dame. Two total touchdowns, 18 carries for 130 yards. Mother of God, they're missing Joe Mixon and Samaje P. Ryan. Uh, there's the American, Kyle Allen, good performance there. Here we have the Central USA. Here we have the Independents. Here we have the MAC. Here we have the Midwest. Four total touchdowns there for Utah State quarterback Kent Myers. Pac-12, Syracuse linebacker Joey Alfieri. Three sacks on the day. And running back for Wisconsin in relief, I can only assume, of Miles Gaskin. Salvon Ahmed with 148 yards and two total touchdowns on the day. SEC, Roquan Smith from Georgia, bunch of tackles, two sacks and a forced fumble. And Jalen Hurts in a win against Ole Miss had four total touchdowns on the day. There we have the Sun Belt Players of the Week. And that will do it. So those are all your Player of the Week. Some big time performances and maybe what can be considered the first legit week of college football with roughly five or so games that were between teams that are really trying to vibe for a national title so thank you guys for tuning in for this episode this is your first time stopping by don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button and until next time c4 saying stay tuned for the eagles connected franchise video coming tonight and i'll catch you on the next